Welcome to Necessary Conversations. I'm your host, Salima Sag. I'm my guy, Alex. The cruise boy, man. Long the cruise there. boy, man. We've been <laughs> trying to get this locked in for a skinny, huh? Nah, for a fact. Long man. Long hey, bro, how you doing? Doing all right, man. Yourself? Man. Can't call it. I mean, we're about to get out of here. You were saying you were joining? Yeah, I'm sophomore, man. Sophomore? I'm going in my junior year. Heck. <laughs> You young, don't Still young, man. Still young. You got some years on you, huh? Yeah. A lot of How old are you? years, too. How old are you? 21. Nah. You 21? Yeah. When your birthday? My birthday? Yeah. November 22nd, 2001. Oh, I'm still older than you. I'm cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I'm still yeah. older than you. My birthday's September. You know what I mean? So. What, what, what is it? Send me what? 13th. Okay. Friday the 13th. You know what I mean? <laughs> My brother the first. Yeah? Yeah, September 1st. I don't, bro. I don't like. I, I wouldn't for me, right? I wouldn't want to have a birthday on first, just because that's when the bills do. <laughs> Presents gonna be less. You know what I mean? Some fact they knocking on your door like rent. Yeah, that, uh, <laughs> mom, I want the PS Five. <laughs> well, the rent is about that triple. You know what I mean that is so a I, fact? Yeah, I, I, but I mean, like in the middle of the month, that's when you get the second paycheck. So now you're a little bit. So I'm saying, so that's good <laughs> for me. You know what I mean, I feel like my that birthday. Growing up, bro, I ain't gonna lie, like. When I was signed up for different things like a Wizard One One, whatever. Did you play Wizard One One? Nah, you didn't I play never that? played that. You never I, played I was them? never into that. I was never into like no Clash of Clans, Wizard One One. Nah, I ain't played. Cl- only like thing that. I played was Wizard One One. Right, I never played those. Nah, what was you playing when you grew up? Who was you on? I was on that little bad shit. I'm not gonna lie. I was yeah. on like the like the San Andreas and yeah. the, you know what I mean, like yeah. the San Andreas, the COD, the Halo, Halo, shit like that. So you were Xbox boy? Nah, never. How you play Halo? Halo nah, I started Xbox. up. I started okay. up in the Xbox. My older brother. Xbox, yeah, my older Xbox. brother had a little the Xbox 360. But then once I got older, like once I got into like my teens, yeah. Then I started hopping on the PlayStation. I had my you know PS one, two, three, yeah, four, now five. Good, yeah. So I'm locked in. Yeah, Halo. Which one? Halo, Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Yeah. All the way. Which one your favorite one? Two. Black Ops Two. Yeah. Well, Black Ops yeah, 1, though, got that nostalgic feeling to it, though. Like yeah, bro, I'm talking about when you load that joint up, <laughs> and then the man sitting in the chair, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean, trying to get out, you know what I mean, boy, boy, every yeah, time you used to come home in middle school, up. you right on there, forget the homework. Oh, man, Fridays, there was no other day like it. <sighs> Yo, you hopping on the game? Oh, yeah, I'm already young. I got I'm already my, young. I'm in the kitchen first, so I get my food ready oh, yeah. for the you know what I mean? Then I'm upstairs. Mom, leave me alone. Upstairs with it. <laughs> Garbage will be taken out later. Got the lays right on the side. You did what I'm saying? Craggy. What flavor? Ah, uh, man. That's that's a good one. I mean, I usually switch between the barbecue. Barbecue yeah. and the original. It all depends on the how I'm Original? Feeling. Hey, bro, I got about 20 original Pringles that you could have. I don't want them, man. I mean, if you, like, you know what I mean, sometimes they be hitting, though. If you get, like, a cold sometimes. cut on the side, you know sometimes. what I mean? I, can't, I just little. can't eat them bare, though. I got to eat them with something. Yeah? What you be eating it with? Cold cuts. Uh-huh. Put hot sauce yeah. on them? I know some people nah, that put hot really. sauce on Pringles, man. Nah. Sick humans. Nah, I don't do that. Yeah. I don't do that. I mean, if I'm having, like, the salt and vinegar kind, I don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'll do, like, a little, like, pickles and stuff like that. But yeah. Other than that. I ain't feeling it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Where you from, it? though, man? <laughs> New, Medf- New Bedford, Massachusetts, man. Born yeah. and raised. The 508, as it's known. Yeah. Down the East Coast. Over there by um Cape Cod. Yeah. Providence area. You like it down there? Yeah. I mean, for the most part, you know, it was um it was good when yeah. I was brought up. But it's just small town. About 100K people in there. So yeah. it ain't too much going on. But we work with what we got. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? How did you get into track? You on the track team here at AIC? Yeah. Man, like, you know, you, it's, I don't, I, for me, I've never heard of too many, you know what I mean, track teams as far as, you know, Little League. You know, they got the Little League yeah, basketball, yeah, yeah. Little League football, Little League baseball, whatever, <laughs> AAU, you know what I mean? But and it, I never heard of, you know what I mean, it's Little League track unless you just the fastest kid they ever seen, you know what I mean? So yeah. how did you, you know what I mean, you got, Middle school, right? You mm-hmm. could join the track team, of course. But yep. as a kid, like, you ever got into any other sports? Well, I played soccer for the majority of my really? life. Really? And I didn't make the transition into track and field until I got to high school. Yeah? So once I really got to, like, because I had an opportunity when I was, um, it's funny, because 
had an opportunity when I was in um the eighth grade. Mm. And he was just like, yo, we got the high school over there. And um, you can actually be on a team and do meets and stuff like that. Mm. You know, compete with a team, like, you know, real track high school shit. So mm. I'm just like, I'm like, nah, like I'm a soccer player. Like at mm. this time, I'm, you know, I'm in, I'm in the league, you know, the little, you know, um, little soccer league, stuff like that. Um, called St. Michael. So I'm like, you know what? Like, nah, I'm just, I'm worried about soccer. Like, mm. I mean, I wanted to maybe, you know, drift into track, but I don't want to mm. do that. You know, like I'm very invested into soccer at the time. Mm. So um, my gym teacher, I had a good relationship with him and he actually coached the, the track and field team too mm. on the high school. So I'm like, all right, you know, I'll give it a try. My older brother went to that high school. I ended up going into a vocational school. We'll talk, we'll, um, tip into that in a little bit. But, um, but yeah, I was in... Uh, middle school, he was just like, "Yo, uh, bring this, you know, bring this application to me. Have it signed. It. Like, I know you should give it a try. Da, da, da. Yeah. Like, you're a really good kid. You look like you have some raw potential." Yeah. Like, nah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> da, da, da. But it's funny. But it's the best decision I ever made because yeah. it's like it's crazy because sometimes in life we don't see, you know, the opportunity or what outcome. But I would have never thought that it would have brought me this far because sure. like track and field is the reason why I came all the way to college. You know, yeah. I mean, I made it all the way here. Yeah. You know, I'll be the first generation college student graduating That's out good. of my family. That's so, good. you know what I mean? Yeah, I never really had, um, you know, that thought in mind. Be like, oh, I'm going to college. It was always just like, okay, like, you know, I'm going to go to vote, the high school I went to, yeah. trade school, get a trade, and then just be out. Yeah. Um, I could have still did that, but, you know, the opportunity I got provided with, you know, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't say no to it. So, that's why... Um, I had took it into consideration, you know, went on with it. But um, yeah, long story short, he gave me the application. He's like, you know, you should try it. Like, nah, I don't want to. So <clears throat> he was like very aggressive and persistent. Yeah. So I'm just like, you know what? You know what I mean? When the old head's yeah. just like, nah, nah, nah. So I'm just like, all right, whatever. Got the application. <laughs> yeah. Signed it. Um, Pulled up. And then I'm practicing. I'm competing. Yeah. I'm like, <clears throat> I'm like, man. I could like I could really compete yeah, with these dudes, good. you know what I mean? Like I'm not even in high school yet. Like I'm in eighth grade. Like I compete with these guys and then like especially once I got into like the field events, like the long jump, the triple jump, they competing against D one schools. I'm seeing like what these kids are jumping. I'm like, yo, like yeah, I'm a little off, but yeah. I'm not still young. You know what I mean? I'm not even young, yeah, yeah, I'm not even developed yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like my maturity hasn't really gotten to its peak yet. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna um, I'm gonna, you know, take this into high school and see where it go. Yeah. So, by the time I got to high school, um, I took that. My freshman year of high school, I ended up qualifying for um, New Balance Nationals yeah. in the, um, what do you want to call it? The Armory. That's good. New York City. Yeah. So, yeah, I was um, one of the first out of my school to go. I went with my, um, one of my boys, Jerry. Yeah. And um, I ended up posting a like, little school record for my freshman year. That was a little year. school record. It's a school <laughs> record, for, brother. For my freshman year. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just big, and that was, like, my biggest, like, moment, you know, coming into high school, because I've never been on a stage like that before, mm. where it's just, like, okay, like, I just got here. Like, I, I don't even have, you know, I just, you know, got my feet wet, mm. you know, in the high school. So, having that transition, I'm like, oh, okay, like, now I'm going to do both. Mm. So, I pretty much, I, I played a sport every season. So, mm. winter, I did track. Spring, I did track. Yeah. And fall, I did soccer. Yeah. So I was busy all, you know, all year. Yeah. Um, Conditioning was right, boy. Boy. <laughs> Conditioning was <laughs> right. Boy. You was in shape, Let me huh? tell you. Oh, yeah. But the thing is with soccer, it's totally different yeah. with with um with track. Yeah. Because we did a lot of conditioning, but it was more of just like the technicality too. But track and field is a little both. Yeah. Is you know, um it's really technical it's, it's technical, but then it comes with a lot of conditioning because you're conditioning sure. your whole body. Yeah. But um I always dictated how much I was in shape coming from soccer going into track because I thought I was in shape. Yeah. Really but I wasn't shape. really in shape. Yeah. I was just in shape to kind of get me by. Yeah. But once I got there and the workouts I got put through, I'm just like, yo, I'm it's not in shape. Yeah. So, <laughs> but once I got to that point, you know, the middle of the season, now I'm in shape. Yeah. But like, it was isn't like, okay, coming out of soccer, I'm in the best shape of my life. No, because you think you might be, but yeah. then when you get on there and you know, you're doing these sprints and like you huffing and puffing, you're like, nah, I'm not in shape. Yeah. So, um, fast forward into that, man, I, um, I had the opportunity to go out there, you know, stayed at the hotel, you know, just pretty much got, you know, an elite experience, yeah. and um, I'm like, you know what, I'm really going to start 
like taking it serious. Yeah. So once I started taking it serious, then you know it was, it was up from there. Yeah. And I mean, it's a lot of stuff started happening. Like um, school started reaching out like early on, going yeah. into my junior year, stuff like that. Um, I could have been potentially the first one out of my school's history to go D one. Yeah. But um, obviously with COVID and everything like that, it slowed everything down. But yeah. I had like some major schools over there, like BU, um, UMass Lowell. Yeah. You know, schools that were, you know, that were really competitive that, you know, I would love to see myself in. But, um, you know, I made the decision to come here. Yeah. Um, they reached out. They actually reached out to me. And, you know, they really stuck out from everybody else because they kept reaching out. And, you know, not only checking up on how I'm doing on the track, but how I'm doing in the classroom. So. Yeah it really stuck out compared to other schools that were just checking up on if I submitted the, um, fast the, you know, the fast <laughs> yeah, get like the business you know and all so that, yeah. exactly so like you know I'm gonna give it a try but um you know I had definitely had a great uh, high school experience I would say that like yeah. I had it you know I definitely had a time had a lot of accomplishments and stuff like that you know very blessed yeah. but um yeah I mean I mean I, I like I said I had a time you know from you know, uh, not only me, but the people around me. It was just a different, it was a different setting, you know, getting used to that different setting and adapting. Like, I really enjoyed it, especially because all I knew was soccer, soccer, soccer. Mm. So now that I'm chipping into a different setting and environment, it was just like, whoa, like, this is this is different. And I really knew I could take myself away somewhere with it if I really took the time to sit there and study the sport. And um, I did just that, you know. I was very fortunate enough to win multiple conference championships for my school. Yeah. Um, not only that, but qualified for nationals twice. Yeah. I qualified again in um, my junior year. That was a COVID year. And before we even got outdoors, I was already the highest jumper in the state. Mm. So and then for them to cut the season short, it was just like, damn, like yeah. that really hurt. Because you know what I mean? I'm training for nine months to go to Natties and that happens. But um, my junior year in conference, I went undefeated. Yeah. And then um, my senior year, I went undefeated as well in the conference and then triple jump. I went uh, undefeated in that. Yeah. The invitation was everything. Ended up winning the um, state chip first time. I ended up winning a D2. Win. Yeah. <laughs> trying to get in, bro. State chip. Yeah. And then um, I ended up winning uh, all states too. Yeah. So it's like, because um, it's all division. So I ended up winning my division, which is ours was a division too, but that year was, you know, it was still coming from a COVID year. So 2021, what they did was they threw all the small schools and basically like a D1 meet, like a yeah. pool. And essentially how it is in mass is like all these um, schools, I know like Jersey and stuff like that, they have like groups. Yeah, group like five, that. Group yeah, group one, yeah, yeah, yeah. So ours is just division. So they okay. take all the schools in division one. They have their own meet, all yeah. the schools in division two and three. Yeah. Like every dis- division Got has their own schools for that specific division. Yeah. And then they take the winners out of that or the top three, top four mm-hmm. out of every single division. And they throw them all in one meet, okay. like a pool. Yeah. So and then once, so now you got, okay, you got the kids in your divisions that are studs. But now the next week, you're going against all the studs. Yeah. Everybody in that meets a stud. Yeah. So like, um, like I said, I was fortunate enough to win the last one. And then the next week I went, went undefeated again. Yeah. And then won that one, which was like, now, like, yeah, I'm a state champion, but I was a state champion in that specific division. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it yeah. was a state champion for Division Two and Division Three, But then once I got thrown in that pool, I was state champion of all of Massachusetts. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was, that was really like a breakthrough for me. That was a breakthrough moment because I pretty much, like, you know, a vocational state champion as well. Like my sophomore year, I think it was. I pretty much won everything there was to win in my area besides the national championship. Yeah. So, like I said, very grateful for that. You know, had I not taken that opportunity, who would have knows, you know. But I'm a strong believer in everything happens for a reason. Yeah. So, you know, it's a it's a certain path that um that chose me. Yeah. You know, I just, I was just um destined to follow it, I guess. When you get to a point of, like, like you said, like you won everything there is to win, what keeps you going like like what, what like is no more like when you're when you're in that situation yeah. i mean you get the first okay i want to go to new balance i want to win the state championship i want to win this i want to win that but then you want anything <laughs> like w- what's your purpose for going out there and doing that um i would just say like me for what works for me is just 
my accomplishments, like um, accomplishments, yeah. I meant to say, is what drives my motivation to get there again. Yeah. Because, yeah, you can, it's it's cool, it's amazing when somebody says, oh, like, I want this. But yeah. how amazing is it, like, when you compare it to oh, NBA yeah. players that can say they want it multiple times? Yeah, yeah. Or, you know what I mean, like, uh, Usain Bolt, for example. Yeah. Multiple world records. Won the Olympics multiple times. You know what I mean? So those are things like that, that accolades that still follow you mm. or follow you at a higher caliber. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's like, that's what really separates you from other people. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, you want a chip. I want a chip. But if I want five yeah, man, <laughs> and no. you win two, yeah. you know what I mean? The bracket yeah. gets, you know, stiff and a lot longer. So True. Um, I would say that is what really, it's just that you get that sense of urgency, that sense of drive um, from winning. Because winning, who doesn't like winning? Winning yeah. feels good. So when you win and when you know what it feels like to win i feel like that's what really keeps you going because yeah you go through all the trials and the tribulations and it sucks but mm. when you win there's no other feeling like sure. you because you know what it took yeah. for you to get there yeah so i think that's the main the main point you know in that like i said in that drive and that's what keeps me going so you mentioned you started off with soccer right you know mm-hmm. the coach was very persistent persistent on getting you to track what and but you automatically you know okay I'm actually good in this I'm competing at a young age with these top guys what makes you not still stick with soccer a little bit harder to see okay let me see how far I could go with this were you just never into soccer as much or like what makes you not stick with it as much yeah so um coming in when I first like my family is Cape Verdean so yeah. down overseas that was the sport that they played you know West Africa that was a sport that is really like brought up in the family and even though we didn't have a lot of you know people in um, our my family for yeah. example that really played but it was just like that was something that I grew up around so yeah. that was kind of something that I adapted I was I think I was maybe six when I really started to get into it right you know going to digs buying my little cleats and yeah. you know the shin guards and yeah. stuff like that but I didn't play club until I was like 13 yeah. so it was just playing pickup and, you know, playing with my cousins and stuff like that. Sometimes they tag me along or whatever, and I'm playing with all these older dudes. Yeah. You know, I'm 13 playing with these 40-year-olds getting yeah. bodied. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, damn. So it really had to make me adapt. And um, and like I said, it did it did help, but I didn't really get to play club. You know, there's a, lot of, there's a large bracket there yeah. because I know some kids and some of my boys that I grew up with that I played club with that they've been playing club their whole life yeah. since like Little League you yeah. know what I mean since they were six uh, me I was playing six with pick up with my cousin yeah. you know they was five six years old actually playing on a team and they yeah. play every single year yeah. they played every single year until up to this point so me it was never really like that I primarily focused on school my parents were always working and so it was it was tough for me to get Oh, that one on one, like oh, uh, let's go to the field or let's yeah. play or uh, let me go put you on the team because yeah. my parents never really had the time; they were always at work. So once I got a little older and they seen that, you know, I kind of had a little bit of room to, you know, what I mean, to um, kind of branch out and do what I wanted to do, and that's exactly what I did. I did just that. I took advantage of it, and um, I started to play soccer. But once I got to high school and I seen how invested I got into track and field. I still focused on soccer, but I didn't take it as much serious anymore yeah. because it was like my story was kind of like, um, how do you say it? It was kind of like a person that their high school dream got shattered or something yeah. like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So once I got to high school, I realized that there were a lot of favorites. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Like a lot of favorites. So I'm like, man, because, you know, not to bash on the coach or anything, but it was just like, he had a lot of personal connections with yeah. the players that they were on the team because they played for his club team. Yeah. So a lot, you know, along those lines, he essentially was the first. He was the first to jump to those kids because he had a personal relationship with them. Yeah. And you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but when you got a player that's working his ass off and that's showing up to practice every single day, and um, you know what I mean? He's early. He's showing up. He's working hard. And he's not getting playing time, but a kid who just shows up when he wants to yeah. is getting started and put over you. It's just like, come on, bro. Yeah, so at yeah. the same time, um, like I said, I was a no quitter. So um, I I just kept trying to give it a chance. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every year, 
but every year it would still be the, same, be the thing. same thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So every year it would still be the same thing. Like um, when I went in my freshman year, like I was thrown on the freshman team, which I was fine with that because I had a lot to prove. Yeah. But um, then I think my freshman year, I scored like um, I played striker, a forward position. I had um, I had like thirteen goals, eight assists, or something like that. Mm. Um, in like fourteen games. Yeah. <laughs> so I pretty, a, yeah. I pretty much scored. I pretty much scored. You know, a goal every game. So um, and some of the older heads were like, "Yo, we need to get Alex on like JV or yeah. like varsity." And then you know, I'm just I'm just doing what I do. You know what I mean? Um, but then I got thrown in varsity with them. I think like the end of the year or something like that, mm -hmm. and then that's when um I think we got like blown out first round of the states like six zero or something like that by Nasset. Nasset was winning that they was winning the chip like three years in a row. Like, yeah. They got big dudes <laughs> like yeah. six six five like in the defense. Man, soccer. Like who are we? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we're over here, we're over here. Uh, you know Portuguese, Spanish, crew, yeah. like Cape Verdean. Yeah. We are like five ten, five yeah, nine. Man, These dudes work. is like six six five, I'm like football players. I'm like, damn, <laughs> like. So and then, um, I got to that point. Like I said, I kept trying to give it a chance, but it it just didn't click with me. And then eventually, I started, you know, really taking L's like in soccer. I'm like, man, why am I even? I started questioning myself. I'm like, why am I sitting here trying to? worry about two sports yeah like why am i sitting here trying to worry about two sports when i could really worry about one mm -hmm. and really give it on my all so i'm like you know what um my uh what do you want to call it my um so i did it my freshman year i did it my sophomore year my junior year mm -hmm. um is when covid hit yeah but i still got the opportunity to play i still got the opportunity to do it Soccer because it was yeah. in March, COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and then my uh, senior year, the guys were like, "Yo, you coming back out?" Da -da -da -da. Yeah. I'm like, nah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, nah, bro. Like, I loved it, but at the same time, like, I see what I could do in this sport. Yeah. So why would I backtrack and go there when yeah. I know it's gonna get me nowhere? You know what I mean? So then I ended up worrying about uh, track and field more because. What happened was that year, the way they had it set up was they had track and field, they had indoor track, and yeah. they had um, soccer in the same season. Yeah. So it was going to be a choice. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't going to be both. It was going to be a choice. Yeah. Was I going to do soccer for my last year or was I going to do track? Yeah. So, you know, I'm going to do track. Yeah. And I ended up working out, like I said. I ended up winning two state chips. You know, I went undefeated. I had the best season I ever had in my life with injury at yeah. that too. So. Um, I picked up a hamstring injury late in the year. Hamstrings on the play with. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> every every time that I hit the word hamstring, I get PTSD. Yeah. So, but um, you know, fortunately, I had some um, some woman over there that I knew that I got um references yeah. from to go to, and then um, you know, she was you know the deep tissue massage and stuff like yeah. that. She was flushing my legs, and I you know drinking plenty of water, and just pretty much getting raped. So, um, once that happened, I got raped. And yeah. then I, you know, I was able to go back, no restrictions. And um, like I said, it went out my way and I was fortunate for that, and, um, you know, for me to win that chip. And um, that's kind of how I just drifted off yeah. into, you know, track and field because it was just, it was more opportunity. And if you told me years ago, as soon as I had stepped in that door at that high school, if I was going to go to soccer, if I was going to go to um, college for soccer or track, I would have yeah. said soccer, 100%. Yeah, sure. Because that was my goal. That was my initiative, you know, because... Yeah. Yeah, I had track and field like on my back, but at the same time, I wasn't planning on really taking it serious. Like, yeah, I was gonna do it in high school, but it wasn't gonna be my main focus. Mm. And it's crazy because then it just started to flip, and um, it just went my way. So. Would you say your sophomore year is where you realize, okay, yo, I could really go to college as a high level for this track thing? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I feel like I started looking at it more into my junior year, but it was definitely a thought my sophomore year but yeah. I didn't really take action until my junior year because that's when the letters started yeah. coming in so you know I got I'm, I'm looking at me doing track and I'm looking at me doing soccer I'm like okay I haven't seen one letter pop in that mailbox yet yeah. for soccer <laughs> what am I doing yeah. like you know what I mean so then once I seen I think I by my I don't know by my sophomore year um, I was getting like talk to and stuff like that meets uh, you know getting pulled to the side and mm -hmm. stuff 
But um, like I was very young, so obviously like no action was taken. But best believe the next year, I was getting every week I was getting called down to the office. Like, oh, yeah. you got a letter for you. And if I'm in the middle of the class, yeah. like you know what I mean? I'm in the middle of the class learning. I'm taking notes. Oh, they you know they dialed the teacher up because every time you had mail or something like that from a school, they would call you down. Yeah. You go pick it up. So I'm seeing schools like University of Hartford. Uh, BU, UMass Lowell, yeah. Framingham. I'm seeing all these schools. I'm like, yo, yeah. <laughs> like, what am I doing? Like, yeah. I'm definitely, like, I'm definitely locking in. Yeah. So, then by the time I got to my um, my senior year, mm -hmm. I kid you not, I had like 25 plus letters. Yeah, I had like 25 plus letters. And then everybody's like, oh, um, yeah, track and field. All you guys do is run. It's not gonna get you nowhere. <laughs> da, 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 da. You're yeah. not gonna go to college for it. That's a lie. Yeah, <laughs> like you know boy. how much money there is within scholarships in track and field. Like if you go to a school that has a budget, like sure. a budget, there's sure. a lot of money that, like to be made. And like sometimes like the young kids coming up, they kind of want to drift away from track because they feel like they're not gonna be money awarded nothing. The football. But there's no money. There's no money being given out. Yeah. So there's a lot of money to take advantage of over yeah. there in a sport like that. You know what I mean? Because obviously you got to have a way bigger budget for, you know, schools that have the basketball and, you know, and the, um, what do you want to call it, the football? Because yeah. they have huge rosters. So yeah. they need to, if they're going to give out scholarship money, they need to have the budget for it to yeah. support it. But um, track and field, like, yeah, you can still have a large team, people in various different areas, but there's still a lot of money in scholarships and grants to be given out that, people don't take advantage of or people don't even see because a lot of it is just tucked under the rug and under the radar. So a yeah. lot of people don't, you know, necessarily know what they're getting themselves into. But there's a lot of money over there, man. Yeah. Definitely. That's dope. Hey, bro, listen, like, you're on the track team now, but mm -hmm. you're looking to make your way out of here. Yeah. How that process going for you? Definitely. Um, I got some in the works right now. Yeah. I mean, uh. Yeah, they they definitely gonna see what's what's about to happen. Yeah. But um, yeah, I just felt like um, I definitely I love to hear, yeah. you know, and I, I just love the energy that um the people I was with. But it's just not necessarily the people or the place. It's just me trying to take a new leap of faith, yeah. a new journey, and We're just taking kinda, it to higher levels. Yeah, and yeah. just try to see what um, you know, what the future has in store for me. I feel like me being in Massachusetts my whole life, it's like, I wonder what it is on the other side of the country, you know yeah. what I mean? So, I've always had, um, you know, like my family around and stuff like that. And even though I'm here in Springfield, like in Bedford, Mass, that's probably about like a two hour, two hour drive. Yeah. But um, again, I don't get homesick because I'm home yeah. like every other week. Yeah. So, me being, you know, taking that step and for me to get the opportunity, it's not just necessarily the fact that me trying to, you know, steer away or get away from my family or whatever. It's just the fact that I feel like for me to really lock in and to really grow myself, I feel like I need to be away from all that so I can really put into focus and, you know, kind of bring my plans into fruition and, you know, kind of just um just focus on that. And um, I feel like over here, mm -hmm. um, like I said, I developed a lot of relationships and stuff, but um, coming from a trade school, I was in engineering. Yeah. I was in engineering and stuff Boy like that. Man. <laughs> I was in engineering. So um coming from engineering and then when I got here I knew there wasn't um I knew there wasn't no engineering because obviously before I um committed I was like, you know what, there's no engineering, but I'm gonna go in business and see how it goes. Yeah. But um looking at that and looking back on it, I'm like, you know, maybe I kinda wanna I've kinda missed the engineering portion a little bit. So um, I looked into, you know, a few schools that had that specific, you know, machining um, technician and engineering and stuff like that. So that's kind of where I'm trying to gravitate towards now and, you know, just kind of follow that because I pretty much already had my foot in the door before yeah. I came here with that. So, like I said, coming from a trade school, like those kids are very fortunate because we have the opportunity to, you know, build our resume because we're dealing with that for four years. Yeah. So it's like all we have to do some trades you have to get more licenses but you pretty much already have your foot in the door to start at entry level yeah so i could have started at entry level you know i already got my osha certification out the way and all that while i was in high school so i could have got you know there but um 
like I said, I just wanted to see where the business was going to take me to. And I mean, it's, it's going pretty smooth. It's going well, but I feel like I kind of just missed that engineering portion just a little that's bit. That's where you want to be So, at. yeah, that's where I want to be at. And um, that's where my body and my heart is pulling me to. So I feel like, um, you know, going through that and um, going through the motion, taking that new journey and going all the way across, you know, the country, I feel like that's really what's going to make me lock in and not only make me a better athlete, but um, just make me a better person overall. Yeah. You mentioned like you want to take this to new heights, right? The track thing. You even yeah. getting in your new major. Most kids, like you mentioned earlier, they don't know about track, right? They don't know about the the opportunity track could bring you. Yeah. And when people only when people see track, they see, you know, Olympics. That's all they mostly see the Olympics. The Shakari yeah. Richardsons, Usain Bolts. You know, I mean, they only see the Olympics. That's the only time they see people run. They don't know about a real career in the you know I mean the the world of track. Yeah. Um, for you, is it like? I want to take it to the, the highest I could take it when it comes to track and field, or do you want to stick with the engineering side of things? Well, like I said, obviously I have a passion for both. Yeah. And obviously I would love I would love to be an Olympian. Yeah. Um, but of course that comes with new heights. And me where I'm at right now, I don't necessarily see myself elevating. So for you to elevate, you got to put yourself around an elevated position for yeah. you to see you know what I mean, to feel things out, to, you know, pretty much get get out of your comfort zone. And I feel like that's what I need to get that drive and that push that, I, um, that I've been, you know, striving for, essentially. So I feel like me going into a different setting, in a different space, different area of people, you know, where everything's totally different. Like I said, again, you know, that's, I feel like that's what's really going to make me lock in. Yeah. And, yeah, I would love to be an Olympian. Um, I feel like probably it's not everybody's dream yeah you know um as far as being a track athlete because we know what it comes with yeah um like yeah everybody sees the the good side and you're running good times and you're jumping yeah. and you're doing all these good stuff and they see all these world records but they don't know what it takes to get there yeah. <laughs> when you have practice and you know you're talking to them demons you throwing up your lunch you're like man yeah. bro, i don't even want to do this no more i can't tell you how many times I look myself in the eye, like, I look myself, you know what I mean? Look down on myself, and I look in the sky, and I'm like, man, I'm like, why do I even do this? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Because your mind starts playing with you, like, because yeah. when you put your body in an uncomfortable situation, you don't understand how, some people don't understand how negative you mm -hmm. can be to yourself. Sure. And it really, like, it really, like, the self-doubt just starts kicking in, like, why am I doing this? Like why I keep putting myself through this. Do I really want to do this? But, but like I said, it's that drive that brings you back to practice the next day to do yeah. it all over again. Yeah. So it's just when you're in that state, it's like, damn, this sucks. But getting out of it and, like, you know, being your true self, you're like, man, I really want to do this. But obviously, the higher you get, the harder it's going to get. Yeah. So I feel like a lot of people aren't ready for all that because it chips into way too much of what they want to do because – yeah, you're doing track and field right now, but obviously when you go professional, it's totally different. Like, you're dealing with trainers, you're dealing with different time schedules and practices and certain diets you got to go by. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people just don't want to do that. Like, some people just want to, yeah, they want to compete and they want to have a good, you know, competing resume, but at the same time, they want to live their life. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. But I just feel like that lifestyle, just with sports in general, like, it's, it's just not built for everybody. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, I would want to do it, but at the same time, even if I didn't, I'd be fine with doing engineering because yeah. that's something that I love at the end of the day. It's not just like, man, track and field is my only option, and now <laughs> now I have yeah. no choice but to go on something that I don't love. You know what I mean? So I kind of just pick two things that I really love. So even if it goes either way, I'll still be happy. And, you know, track and field taught me a lot. And, yeah. you know, it brought me a lot of places. And I know what it can do for people. So knowing that, and then having an engineering background too, it kind of just helped me out. And yeah. the rest of things just to make things a little bit easier for me. Talking about track and field, get to a little bit off the field stuff. Like talked a little bit off camera. You you in the stocks, bro? Like I mean, you in the stocks heavy. But some people get in the stocks to build for the future. Some people get in the stocks for, I mean, make the money. You know, what I mean, the, it increases. You take it out with a dividend. Take it out. Yep. For you, like, what is the reason for you getting the stocks? What got you in the stocks? Like, talk about your stock situation. Me, um, 
As far as stocks, um, I'm not really big into stocks right mm. now, but um, I feel like what I would what I would want to look into mm. is definitely long term. Cause mm. like, I feel like if there's an area for you to put your money in, I feel like it'd be better for you to do that long term. Mm. Because yeah, you're not. I feel like some people now they want to do stocks and it's just like yo, I want to pay out, I want to pay out, mm. I want to pay out, but they don't want to wait for the future. Mm. So I feel like you know having how they say um having a little bit of motion is better than no motion. Yeah. Like because I could throw in you know a couple thousand in like a, a crypto tonight. Mm. And since, you know, the market is always open, by the next morning I wake up, it's all gone. So, you know what I mean? So, I feel like just putting, you know, just waiting it out and just putting your money in the right thing, in the right direction. I feel like you just can't go wrong with that, and especially if you have, you know, like a 401k or something mm. like that. And, um, you know, fortunately, engineering has, you know, 401ks mm. and, you know, retirement plans and, you know, stuff like that. That um you could really put your money in if you feel comfortable and safe to do it that way. If you don't feel, um, if you feel uncomfortable to put your money in stocks, you can kind of put it in you know four hundred one k. Or you know I'm sure there's way up more other retirement plans like that that I mm. educate myself on putting my money in there where I feel more confident because I know where it's going. Mm. But um, yeah, as far as stocks, um, that's something I definitely want to like look into more and really lock in. But I feel like I'd be more of a long term person just because. I feel like it's definitely like it's it's work regardless, but there's definitely more risk in you being like a day trader rather mm. than um, a person who's doing long term because you get that steady, you kind of get that steady increase or that steady decrease, so you kind of can dictate where it's going. You're not just looking for the quick payout, you mm. know what I mean? Because I feel like that's where a lot of money is lost. Again, I could be wrong, but mm. um, I definitely feel like the long term is the way to go. I'm going to get you out of here soon because you got practice. I don't want to make you late. But I do want to ask you, right? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. For you, Alex, man, like, what's your what's your end goal, bro? Like, for you to be like, yo, I, like, obviously you talked about, like, you know, track bought you to height you never thought you, you know what I mean, would be at. You know what I mean? Like, New York, the New Balance is setting records. State champs, I believe, recently you got um a banner on your wall at your high school and they had a ceremony for there. So, you know, you're, you're submitted in the history books. But for you, what makes you feel like, yo, like I, I made it, you know what I mean? I done something. Well, just me looking back at my history and um, just where my parents came from, I feel like that really makes me um, just proud because my parents really didn't come from anything. Mm. Like, and I, and I'm, like, I'm, I'm not gonna say, I had the best childhood. Mm. For me, I'm, I'm gonna say like, from what they came from compared to what they came from, I definitely had a great childhood because mm. they came from the stuff they endured, like I couldn't even, uh, I couldn't even brace that. Mm. Like you know, um, my parents, you know, having to work at a young age. Like I'm talking, you know, they didn't go past fifth grade. Mm. So you know what I mean. Like just having being that young, and having my younger self in that, and just picturing myself going straight to work to help my family provide rather than going to school. Mm. Not mm. anybody can mm. endure that. So I feel mm. like that's one of the main focuses and the drives that keep me going because it's like. I have that support system yeah. and I know what they came from. So it just makes me even more proud to even get to this height. Like yeah. even this, the way, the position I'm in right now, I could, I couldn't, you know what I mean? Like do anything tomorrow. Yeah. You know what I mean? I could just, okay, say, yo, I'm wrapping it up. I'm calling it quits here. Yeah. And, um, my parents obviously wouldn't be satisfied because they yeah. want me to be better. But yeah. at the same time, they wouldn't say that, any of my time up to this point was wasted yeah. because from what they came from they don't get to they don't get to go to high school yeah. you know what i mean they don't get to go to college like yeah. i said i'm gonna be the first generation college student to be graduating for my family so yeah. that even that right there is big for them even me graduating high school is is big for them so yeah. they just see me coming up you know what i mean and from sports and just uh bringing it not only you know on the track but in the classroom and coming up you know what i mean and that, i feel like that's the greatest um, achievement that they really appreciate, especially again, like the banner on the wall. I mean, there's nothing like it, you know. Yeah. When you invite your pops and your mom yeah. and stuff like that, you know, um, you know what I mean. They go and they see something like that, and then you can see the tears and the glare, you know what I mean, yeah. in their eyes. Like, it's just it's it's a beautiful moment. It's so, it's so surreal. Like, yeah. is I never thought that I would be able to bring 
that much joy into that setting. So mm. seeing that, I feel like that's main, like mainly what keeps me going. My family, you know, my brothers, they're my great supporters. Mm. My mom, my dad, you know, just my family in general. I feel like it's just, it's a lot because of where they came from looking back. And I feel like that's just the main thing. And I feel like that's why they're so proud because they know like how hard they had to go through mm. to get here. So I feel like as their son, that's my job to really make them proud and kind of take off a little bit of, you know, weight off their shoulders. Cause mm. I don't want to just be like, you know, an ordinary that, mm. you know, had my parents come down from the islands mm. to give me a better life and I'm throwing it all away. For I'm sure. gang banging, I'm doing all sure. that. That's why I try to just keep myself, you know, square and, you know, and being not only in the best mindset, but try to make the right decisions as well. Mm. You know, not to not only embarrass myself, but embarrass my parents. For sure. Because you never want to do that. You know mm. what I mean? So I feel like that's my that's my main motivator. That's what keeps me going. Yeah. Alex, brother, listen. You know what I mean? First one in your family, that's big. Yeah. You gotta keep going for that, brothers. Don't don't quit. You know what I mean? No matter where no matter where you go, you know what I mean, that's you know what I mean, for your, your college situation. Yeah. You know what I mean, just remember why you started this thing, the journey along the way that it took for you to get here. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you, know, you got to make them proud. You got to make your family proud. You got to make the city proud. I mean, you can't can't get had that band on the wall at the high school. Then, you know I mean, they would, okay, climb, where is yeah. he at? Where is he at now? Oh, he, he go outside. You probably ask. He'll probably ask you for a dollar. You know I mean, you don't want to <laughs> be there. You know what yeah. I mean? So you got to keep going, brother. You got to keep doing your thing. And um, I know you're gonna get there no matter where you go. You're gonna do your thing. I mean, for so. Sure. Just keep going. I mean, next time I see you, I know you probably have a nice suit on. So uh, mandatory. Man, like yeah, you you, you was spiffy that, that was <laughs> for the presentation. You was spiffy. I mean, I tried, man. I tried. Church, church outfit. Try I mean, clean, I'm, nice. Let me see. Let me see. I put that on for Alice before the show, and Yo, he, he took the headphones like, right off. He's good, scared. Bro. He's scared. Yeah, so. Alice, I appreciate you That's coming on the show, man. I'm gonna get you out to practice. I don't want you to be late, man. If uh, your your coaching to call me, I should call me. They call me. <laughs> nah, man, we man. should be all right, bro. Yeah. Should have time. Hey, man, Alex, appreciate you coming nah, on, my boy. I appreciate you, my brother. Thank you for watching that series conversations. Always. I'm your host, Lee Messiah, and we out.